Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster. When I, when I asked my brain just a few seconds ago, what should we do for the opening of the podcast? It said Jasmine Rice. And then I, I said, talk about Jasmine Rice in, a, in an intro, like a teaser that's supposed to be about 30 seconds or uh, whip up a pot of it. Uh, I mean, I know I had it for dinner. If I could think of a song like Jasmine Rice on my mind, uh, that would be one of the songs that would make about as much sense as, uh, you know, the whole idea of the podcast is it only makes partial sense. Just like when I say, hey, let's set up something witty for the podcast, Brain, what do you got? A Jasmine Rice. And I don't think we're the Jasmine Rice podcast, uh, but, uh, you know, we're here, and we're here to put you to sleep. Uh, so uh, you might not know what I'm talking about. I barely do, too. Welcome to Sleep With Me, podcast to put you to sleep. And those of you that are regular, multiple episode listeners, if you could just listen close, because this is the way we bring the podcast to you free and free for everybody else. Uh, thanks. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Uh, thanks, Mystery Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. And, uh, you know, a huge, huge way to help the show. One listener initiative. If you're listening and you get a lot out of the podcast, you want to help the show in a huge way, let one person know about it. Or, you know, let a bunch of people online know about it. Maybe one person it'll resonate with. Uh, you know, or if podcasting comes up, just let them know about the show, your honest experience. But I would love for, for the podcast to grow a little bit here to, as the, the year winds down. Uh, so if you could help me out, bring me one listener. That would be a huge help. One listener initiative. Uh, we did it a while back, and I uh, appreciate it. Uh, and what do you say we get on with the show? Uh, hey, everybody. It's uh, Scoots. And I don't know if you've been on the fence about becoming a patron, but uh, now's the time to think about it. we got a lot of exciting stuff going on over there. But I don't know if you know the basics or if you're a patron and you haven't set up your patron RSS feed, but whether you listen all night, you listen in the middle of the night, you listen eight times a week, you listen three times a week. But our usual schedule on Patreon is like Sunday nights, uh, the, we, you get a brand new episode early and it's a little bit more sleep conducive because it doesn't have as many interruptions. Then on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday nights, m most patrons uh, get a story only episode. So people that just like the stories or like to listen all night. Uh, then on Wednesday night is a brand new uh, episode. It comes out early. And then Thursdays are normally, if you're a $10 patron, uh, a few Thursdays a month, you get all intro episodes, brand new all intro episodes that are only available on Patreon. Uh, sometimes there'll be another exclusive or something from our archive. And I looked recently, in, in the $5 patron feed, there's over 800 episodes and there's well over a thousand episodes available. That includes, you know, different styles, episodes and stuff in the $10 and $20 patron feeds. So if you listen to Sleep With Me a lot, or you're a super fan, or you want to be a part of a community. I mean, I think my favorite part is, you know, the, the brand new episodes that go out to patrons, they have secret patron messages at the beginning. So I guess what I'm saying is if, if you really enjoy the show and you want to get more out of it, you want more to sleep to, become a patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, I don't know if you've checked out our merch store lately, but you better get over there. We got stickers. We got a Boarfriend shirt. We got a lot more stuff in the works, uh, plus all of the merch you've come to love. Uh, stars on the rear end of those uh, sleepy pants and plenty more. Go over to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Uh, that's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Check out our merch and uh, let me know when you get your swag on. Let me know about it. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. It's a, one part of the podcast. You know, it's at the beginning. It's upbeat a little bit, you know, a little bit over the top uh, because uh, it makes me happy to be able to thank the listeners who empower the show so I could be here for you. I love that you don't have to pay for this podcast. And I wanted to thank Courtney, who supported Native. 
You say, man, who, who, whose armpits smell so great? And I say, well, mine do. Mine smell pretty good right now. I got candy cane on. Huh? Just thanks for asking. Uh, but I wanted to thank Courtney for supporting Native. And if you're listening and you support a sponsor, uh, let them know about it. Let me know about it. And I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. You know, tag them on Twitter or Instagram so they know our partnership's valuable. And so other people know, especially if you're excited about it. So check out what I got from Grove or check out these amazing scents from Native uh, so other listeners find out about it. And it helps us keep this podcast free for everybody. So uh, thanks, Courtney. The Sleepy Supporter Zone is now over. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Son. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. And edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team might have stoned her on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through. When the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Laura, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. You get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance To be part of Nine Vale Presents So now on with the show uh, Thanks, Mystery Bard It's now time for me to slow it down Because uh, it's time uh, to get on with the show What do you say? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. And what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside... Whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts you're thinking about, uh, physical sensations, so things on your mind, things you're physically experiencing, any feelings or emotions coming up, uh, changes in time or temperature or routine, you know, any of that kind of stuff, uh, or uh, someone else's routine is impacting yours. Maybe you work second or third shift, or maybe you work... uh, you know, different types of shifts. I would like to know if anybody works in morning news because I watch my local morning news and I can always empathize with those, uh, everyone that does a job there, whether it's on camera or off camera. I say, holy cow, like, uh, so I have great respect for, for anyone in the morning, local news or national. But, uh, you know, I just say, if, if you're doing morning news, uh, shout out to you. Yeah, because you got, because it's, or any, I mean, I'm not like any other early, super early job too. I, I totally appreciate it. Uh, so that's okay. So where was, where, where am I? Oh, I'm already lost in the podcast. Uh, whatever's keeping, oh, whatever's keeping you awake. It could be any of that stuff. Uh, it could be, Scoots, you, you're, you fell off of the, uh, whatever's keeping you awake. I'd like to take your mind off that. And what I'm going to do is I got a safe place here set aside. I got an invitation for you. Holy cow. I don't know if we talked about invitations on the podcast. I know we've talked about paper products and stationery, maybe not recently. It's this this one is signed. This invitation, it was signed, it's sealed and delivered. It's your, actually yours. It's your invitation. Uh, thanks, Stevie. Uh, oh, Stephen, sorry. Oh, no. Uh, okay, well, I could call, I mean, this is, I'm just in the beginning of a, a intro, so it, I would say Mr. Wonder, but uh, that just sounds, that just ma- makes me giggly, even though, I, you know, I'm a professional, so I'm not giggling now. It also makes me say Mr. Wonder, I, you know, I wah, 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 wonder, why I can't call you Stevie or Steve. I could call you Steve. How about Steve? 
Oh, Steve Wonders, your realtor. Oh, well, interesting. Okay, so uh, where was I? Sorry about that. I got off track there. Oh, you have an invitation for you to this nice, safe place. Now, if you're new, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, uh, ums, ahs, extra, you know, filler words, confu- like uh, confused logic, illogical, all those things. Uh, but really what I'm going to try to do is keep you company while you drift off. So if you're new, one, like I said, I'm glad you're here. I hope this podcast can help. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, but I certainly hope it works for you. Here's a couple of things to know. Structurally, what to expect. The show starts off uh, with a little teaser, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. Uh, then I try to think of something witty to say, which I have about, you know, one in ten chance of doing that. Then there's some business, and that business keeps the podcast, like the people that take action on that support the podcast being free for everybody. So that's a wonderful thing, but necessary, because I do not want the podcast behind a paywall. My goal is for you to be able to listen to it for free if you wish, or for new people to come in. So that's a business. Then there's an intro. Now, the intro is the first thing they can throw off the new listener because usually intros are efficient and they're just an introduction. And with the length of the podcast, technically our intro, which is usually around 12 to 15 to 18 to 20 to 19 to 17 to 16, 13, 11 minutes or so, is still like a, like an intro type length for our podcast. But usually intros like, uh, here's what I'm going to talk about. You, you, you talk about what you're going to talk. I, th- I can't remember how they, because they can't even remember when they say, here's an efficient way to do an intro. You tell them what you're going to talk about. Then you're supposed to do something else efficient, like go through what you're going to talk about. Then tell them again, or why or something. Then tell them again what you're going to talk about. That's an intro, I think. First rule of intros. If we, I forgot what the rules were. So our intro, though, it has a dual purpose or quadruple purpose or more because it really, it's supposed to introduce you to the podcast, uh, but also set you up for a good night's sleep, right? And wind you down, help you to unwind or start to drift off or to get ready for bed. And as you're, if you're new, you kind of might be wherever you're listening to it is where you're listening to it, right? Perfect place. Uh, But as you become a regular listener, a few percentage of people skip ahead to 18 to 20 minutes. But most listeners kind of work it into their bedtime routine. So some people are listening in bed. And some people are listening as they're getting ready for bed or anywhere in between. Some lovely listeners are already uh, sound asleep. But look at how sweet they look. Uh, Isn't that sweet? Uh, So... You just kind of kind of see how it goes. It's just a fr- friendly banter from old Scoots. It, like regular listeners are like, okay, you think Scoots is going to get that intro down, talk about what he's going to talk about? I mean, I definitely show like why I make a sleep podcast. So I got that part down. But the talk, so the intro is just a friendly time to get ready for bed and to, to get like in the mood. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think I've already, uh, I think I've successfully, unsuccessfully told you what the intro is. Uh, Then there's uh, some more business between the intro and the show. Uh, Then tonight will be like a random Tuesday-style episode. I I think we're going to be doing a a board game unboxing and talking about like uh, the board games in this board game lineup. So that'll be fun. And then there's some thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show. Uh, also, if you're new, a couple other things. There's no, uh, you don't need to pay attention to this podcast. Uh, so there's no pressure uh, to listen along. You can kind of listen along at your leisure, loosely or out of focus or on a low volume. Uh, you know, kind of just barely follow along if you like. Uh, but there's also no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for about an hour. There's 299 other episodes ready to go, so if you need to play them back to back to back, uh, you can do that. 
So I'm here uh, to, to keep you company as you drift off. So if you can't sleep, I'll be here till the very end to keep you company. But ideally, for a lot of you, that means that you can just drift off along the way. But they, they have plenty of time to do that. And, you know, I'll be kind of overanalyzing the details of this game and, and pondering if I were to play it, uh, like what I would do. Also, I know I mentioned invitations at the beginning. And I would say, you know, invitations are probably not, I guess it depends on what the invitations are for. That could be something, like a lot of times I say no invitations in bed, but I'd, I'd say, well, invitations might not be, like if you're only, you say, okay, let's put it in like limits. So you say, okay, 10 invitations. If you're feeling excited about it and you're saying, like we'll be doing the, con, like a not the exact condo method, but here's a like a, con, what do they call that when you alter it? Uh, for your own purposes, repurposing condo. That's my new book. Uh, how I used Marie Kondo's, uh, how I used Marie Kondo's, uh, principles on, uh, uh, rocks and, and uh, like when I play in the, in the dirt, uh, that's probably not going to be the official subtitle of the book or condoed. You know, how I took the condo method into my condo. I don't have a condo right now, but I think that would be a good one. Condoed. Uh, how am I, you know, so that probably somebody already, uh, let's lock that one down because that's definitely going to be a title in five years. People are going to be after. Probably would be a good name for a podcast if we could, but, but I, so anyway, this is, a, I'm not, uh, so I was just saying, Let's just say invitations are okay and bad. If you're feeling good about them, if there's a limit, you say, okay, I'm going to do 10 invitations to this tea party tonight. Not that the tea party's tonight, it's in the future. And then you do a little condoing, like for real. You say, okay, I'm inviting Tammy. She brings me joy. This is one of the things I'm grateful. Dear Tammy, can't wait to see you at the tea party. Don't worry, I'll cut the crust off for you. FYI, I'm pretty sure TK, T sandwiches don't have crusts. Love you lots, uh, uh, Lurleen. You know, and then so so that would be a, that would be actually a good thing to use in con, con, combination. Another word we could create con, condo con, well condo nation. There's another thing. Let's lock that one down. That would be the Marie Kondo super fan cast or a network of Marie Kondo related fan, ca- you know, Marie Kondo inspired fan casts. Uh, yeah, we call ourselves Kondo Nation. It, it's a little close to Condon. Con, con, anyway, because of my inability to pronounce words. Uh, so that's an idea for invitations. Uh, Here's an idea. This is just an off-the-wall one, but, uh, you know, I'm always looking for stuff to kind of make me feel better. Uh, and then this just popped into my mind. But I think it's, it's I'm always looking for sticky ideas. Uh, what if you, like, because there's, like, a lot of things like with gratitude lists, right? And that's a powerful bedtime technique. And, uh, you know, we have a different pro- program or Oprah or two people that really are big on gratitude lists. And uh, so here's an idea for a twist on a gratitude list. Uh, another, that, uh, man, I'm, I'm coming up with titles for stuff. Uh, uh, is uh, what if you give, uh, what if you send out imaginary invitations and uh, like invite them into the day tomorrow? Hey, this is just wacky, but I think it actually, this is the kind of stuff I actually do at bedtime. And then I try to, it's like, uh, or like you say, well, this is the things I wanted to be grateful for today, you know, or you could write it in perspective. Like if, if Koa was writing it, she'd say, you know, dear scoots, uh, or dear constant petting of your dog and, and multiple dog walks and extra treats, uh, can't wait to see you tomorrow all day. Really looking forward to it. And I guess you could do it as thank you notes. I think that's a kind of popular thing. That could be another thing. Like, uh, instead of doing a gratitude list, imaginary, dear, dear, dear dragonfly, thanks for buzzing by me today. It was great. Uh, 
You're so sparkly. Love scoots. That would be one I, would, I wouldn't have written today unless I see a dragonfly. Dear dragonfly, I imagined flew by. It was, you were pretty great. Uh, maybe different than a regular drag. And then I would send, I guess, dear dragonflies of the world. Uh, I know we don't technically live in the same area. And I don't know if you're seasonal or not, but I'd love to see you tomorrow. I'm having a dragonfly party. I don't have any idea what any dragonfly, you know, I don't know any other things you might like. And I don't want to be presumptuous, uh, but I'm going to bed, so I can't do any research. Uh, but I hope to see you tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be there tomorrow. But if you don't come, I totally get it. Uh, and also I have an imaginary dragonfly, just in case. Love scoots. So I don't know. There's something that came out of nowhere, but that actually might be useful. Uh, so hopefully someone out there can use that. Uh, I'm going to try using it. I'm not like sometimes I'm facetious, but this time I'm not. Uh, I'll be trying. Would somebody remind me yeah, this will be uh, this episode will be out like months and months after I recorded it. So it'll be a good experiment. Like check in with me and see if I'm using that. The invitation method uh, or the thank you. Card. I mean, I know thank you sort of thing. So. Anyway, the well, main thing is I'm really thankful you're here. You've taken time. You've taken a, a risk to check this show out or to come back or to support the show on a regular basis. And I really do. I'm really grateful for that. Uh, and I, don't, I would do something witty like write you a thank you note or an invitation. But I really would just say it straightforward. I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate your time and attention. And while this podcast doesn't work for everybody, I really hope it does work for you because you do deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive because I want to help to put you to sleep or, or to be here as you drift off or as you can't sleep. Uh, so thanks so much. And here's a couple of cool ways we're able to keep this podcast free for everybody. Uh, hey, it's uh, Scoots. I wanted to check in with you about two things if you're a regular listener. If you're a patron, please uh, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash Patreon FAQ and make sure your Patreon feed, your bonus feed is, is set up in your podcast app of choice. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, all the instructions are over at that page. And there's a link to our, our support team on that page to see, oh, I'm stuck. I can't do it. Just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash Patreon FAQ. And then if you're not a patron and you listen to the podcast like more than two or three times a week, uh, like more than the episodes normally come out, and you either want more amazing content to sleep to, story-only episodes, episodes with fun messages, only patrons here, maybe all intro episodes. If you love all intro episodes, $10 patrons get them every other week. Uh, but it's really like a, a, a pride in membership, I guess, uh, because the patrons that I hear from not only do they love the podcast, they love the idea that they're supporting the podcast that's there for them. Like they see it as a two-way street. And I appreciate that. Like about uh, one out of every 50 people that are regular listeners support the show. And so that's an exclusive club, like super fans of the show. And, and I mean, I couldn't do it without those people. So I really, really appreciate it. So whether pride and membership appeals to you or having the real goal in the end is to have more sleepy stuff. And I'm able to do that on the Patreon uh, if, if you listen to the podcast a lot or you listen all night long in particular or five nights a week, just check out our Patreon, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. You'll get more out of it. And so will all the other listeners, the other 98% of people listening to the show. Uh, so think about it, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. And uh, thanks. All right, uh, everybody, welcome to a, a, a like an actual board game unboxing. We do these uh, from time to time. So far, no one's sent me a board game. I think one person, one company inquired one time uh, to like actually have us talk about a specific game. And then I said, well, you probably, if you're going to choose that, then you probably have to pay me. Uh, and uh, so then, so I still just buy my own games, uh, just so everybody knows. And I usually buy them when they're on sale. And I buy them to play with either Antonio Banderas or my daughter. And I, so this game, I've, I've played a version of it. Um, actually, I've never played the board game version of it. So this is one where I'm going, have we done this before? Where I've gone uh, from the... Um, modern era back to the board game era, which I think the board board games are still a modern era thing, at least to me. 
Uh, so maybe I'll talk about this, but just for anybody who's re- never heard one of these episodes. So I'll talk about a board game, and then I'll unbox it. I took the wrapping off, but I have not, like, I literally have it in my hands. Uh, and it's a really nice box. Uh, it, the, the art is not exactly, like, uh, totally bringing me into the game. Uh, but it, and it's heavy, and it's a heavy-duty box. So those are all good signs. And it's not really a playful game anyway, so that's why the art is a little bit more not real to life. But so the name of the game, well, it says Alan R. Moon. This is, so I'm looking at the cover of the game. I'll do the top cover of the box, and then I'll talk about the top cover. Then I'll talk about the history, with my history with the game, and then uh, flip it over, look at the back, open the box, and go from there. Uh, So the name of the game, or the cover of the game, it says Alan R. Moon, and that's in some cursive gold writing. Ticket to Ride, which is in uh, multiple fonts, uh, like in a fun, like a Ticket to Ride theme park type font, and red lettering, but with behind it, uh, I don't know what that's called, but uh, multiple colors. And then it says New York, and the N-E-W of New York is an American flag, and the York, uh, Y-O-R-K, is, it's all cursive. The Y-O-R-K is also kind of like an out-of-focus uh, rest of the flag, I think. So Ticket to Ride New York is the name of the game. It's made by Days of Wonder. And then on the front cover is like a cityscape of New York, uh, looking down a street with the elevated train, I'm guessing, because I'm not good at guessing errors, that it's like 1950s. That's only because one of the people looks like, a, a, what's his name, from Greece or Fonzie from Happy Days, both of which are pop culture icons that I know not everybody knows. Uh, and then there's uh, three other characters standing in the foreground. Everyone's, well, three of the four characters are holding a ticket uh and then there's a business person who has a ticket in their front pocket. Then there's also a cab driver pulling up, waving at us. So there's five uh, humans, I guess we we could call them, that we can see their faces. They're all smiling. Actually, the business person's not smiling. They have uh, they're looking. They look like they're about to explain something. Uh, the cab's license plate reads Dow 218. Uh, it's, it's so, oh, I'm saying it's like, it looks like it's the 1950s, maybe. Could be anywhere from the 1950s to the 1970s. That's how good. Uh, I can almost read the bus, but I can't quite. Uh, St. John's, it maybe says. Uh, and it's actually not, a, maybe it's not a bus. Maybe it's an electric streetcar. And there's the subway. We could see the Chrysler building and the, I think just the tower of the Empire State Building. And so that's pretty much the cover of the game. And let's see, what, what, should, what do we need to know? Oh, so Ticket to Ride. Now, some of you are saying Ticket to Ride. Oh, boy, Scoots, that's a classic. And, uh, because, like, I don't know where this game is most popular. I would assume it's not the U.S., but it, maybe it is the U.S., uh, because in a, in on the internet, I've encountered people that play Ticket to Ride, but I've never encountered it in someone's home, or just in my small circle. I'm not I don't I'm not friends with a ton of board gamers, uh, uh, but I haven't been more anywhere where someone's like, let's play, let's sit down and play Ticket to Ride. But people do. Now, my experience with Ticket to Ride. And I'll try to keep this meander tight, but, you know, you never know. So I have a lot of experience with the Ticket to Ride on the on the iPad or the iPhone. And 99.9% of it is very positive, uh, except for the fact that uh, they, change, they change something around or something, but, but, uh, I think I was like, uh, so, okay. So there's a game called ticket to ride. Let me explain that. Yeah. Let's do that. It's a board game. And then ideally an iPad based board game, which actually makes it a lot easier to play. I mean, I've never played the board game version because there's no setting up or organizing of the pieces or the scoring is all automated. 
and I don't have the verbiage of the actual game in front of me, so this is all off of my memories, but, but I do play it on the regular until they made a change to the app. And also, like, uh, kind of, well, also as my phone got so old, I, old too. But I would say, like, if you're thinking, Scoots, I'm looking for a new game. Well, I guess I don't have the m- most newest version of the app, so I can't endorse it. But I will say that I, like, it is an unbelievably good board game to play, to do pass and play with two or three people. And I'll give you the contextual parts of that coming up here. Uh, so, so we have that. So basically the, the, the game, my familiarity with Ticket to Ride was I heard about it probably on Lifehacker or somewhere. It was like, oh, okay, this is of all the great board games, you know, uh, after, uh, Catan and, uh, Carcassion or whatever, you know, the big, the big dogs, which, of course, uh, my familiarity with and that, those wasn't great either. But the, the Ticket to Ride's usually up there, and they had a, not the top top of the top. I mean, no offense to the game, uh, but up there. And then I think it's a little bit more age accessible, because my daughter and I have been playing it uh, for at least, I'd say, six years, maybe. Podcast, oh, probably, maybe even seven or eight years. Uh, but I, I could be, again, I could be told, all of this could be wrong. So... Okay, so, oh, what's the game? Yeah, you're right. We should talk. So the game of Ticket to Ride is Ticket to Ride a Train. It is, uh, it's not really about riding the trains, though. The edition I play is a continental U.S. edition. And I think I tried to buy, again, I had some issues with the app, and uh, I may have tried to get a European edition or another edition because there's other maps and other add-on versions of the game, which would be very cool and make it more fun. And I've heard that some of the other editions are cool because they have tunnels and things like that, but I haven't played that. So one day, I don't know why what I'm waiting for. I mean, I guess because I have Carcassion on, on my phone, and my daughter and I have been playing that uh, on and off uh, when we have to wait for something in a line particularly, and... Uh, we still haven't even figured, we've played, probably played like 85 games of it, and we still haven't figured out exactly how to, like, like how, how to actually win, uh, like, the scoring. But Ticket to Ride's much easier to figure out. So basically, you're trying to, you're trying to be like a train tycoon and build train lines across the continental U.S., and you get certain cards, there's different... I don't know. I guess it, maybe the rules will come out in this in a little version. But basically, you're trying to connect uh, cities. So you'd get a you get a couple of cards. This is like unboxing the game in my mind. But you get a couple of cards that are like routes. So let's say you want to, uh, you get a route like to connect New York to Miami. Now that's pretty far, and you probably have to you'll have to stop in some cities on the way. And then you have train cards that are in a variety of colors, and you want to have you have to have matching colors that match the. You're trying to match colors and collect cards, and then c- connect those two cities. And, and there's a variety of ways to do that. But if your card is to connect New York to Miami, you need to find a way to control a route between New York and Miami. I guess so you could sell tickets on it. Uh, and then there's other ways to add on points with like the long, longest route, and you're trying to, you know, obviously get more routes and you get points for other stuff. So that's basically not the rules, but a general idea. But this game, so on the phone, I don't know if they, they like, because again, I, I, I bought like an early version of the app. I think I bought this was before, before freemium, I, I think. So I can't even be sure if I bought an early version of the app or like if they went to like a freemium model or they had a paid like 99 cent version or they just went with a premium model because this is a premium game. Even on the iPad, like if I had a fully functioning version with other maps, like I have to say, I would like I've paid somewhere between 10 and $20. It's worth it. Uh, Also, you know, World of Wonder, send your checks over here or whatever the heck your company's name is, it's probably say, well, well, actually, the app rights are controlled by, you know, Laser Beam Enterprises. Okay, so, but this game is so good. Like, it's it's beautiful on the iPad and a little bit easier to read and stuff. 
but it's a really good pass and play game. The only criticism I would have is that there's no timer. And I tend to play, try to play like really fast, uh, and I'm not that patient. So then when I pass it to somebody else, like they can, sometimes they take their time calculating everything. Uh, but because it's like a kind of a strategy game, but once you get down the basic rules, uh, it's more about like, it, it, there's not like a brute force way to win. Like it's always about like taking risks and there's a randomness that kind of evens the levels of playing field. And then if you're taking on more risk, like holding out for certain cards or trying to connect really distant routes, uh, in order to win, um, that, uh, it kind of is good to play with a kid that's like six years, six, seven years old up to like, uh, other adults or a mix of those. And because it's pass and play, especially if like a few people are waiting in line, you can kind of pass it between the people waiting in line. Now, we would always play also with computer uh, competitors, which are not always the most intelligent, but I feel like it just adds an extra challenge. Also, because there's like a slight uh, like a competitiveness to it, like usually you're competing more against the randomness. Like if you're only playing with the people you're past and playing with, it could be like the, the V-I-N-D-E-C-T, you know, that word, like where the competitiveness it could manifest itself in like taking like a property or something like a monopolization. Like you say, well, I'm just going to get that property so you can't have it. And I found having a full game, like, so if two or three, two or three people are playing, like having the rest of the, uh, uh, roles filled by AI or whatever of differing skills or whatever, or, or uh, chaos, chaosness, uh, it makes it better because it's like other people don't try to watch what you're doing and then say, well, if I just block that, you know, then that person will be SOL. But it really is a fun game, and it really helps pass the time, like especially if you're waiting in line at a theme park as opposed to those freaking uh, games that kids like where you got to embarrass yourself or do charades. Uh, like this one is just much more focused, like scoots, like let's just focus, uh, let's not draw attention to ourselves, but let's calculate uh, I don't know. I really do find it a very enjoyable game. And especially when the com competition is robust, uh, but like I, I really find it. And because of the randomness, uh, you could be constantly frustrated. So it kind of, kind of feels like, and again, there's like a ticking clock, but it's more based on number of cards or something or number of train cars you used. So then, I don't know. I, so it's a really good game. That's my thing. So... Then I saw this game on sale, which I hadn't heard of it. This is a two-player fast version of it. Uh, and we'll just go on the back. Oh, look, okay, yeah, we'll just go on the back uh, to read it because this is for, supposed to be for promotion anyway. So it says, again, Alan R. Moon, a Ticket to Ride New York, uh, introducing a New York Ticket to Ride State of Mind. Oh, and here's the air. Welcome to the 60s. Admire the stunning view from the Empire State Building, the world's tallest skyscraper. Or take a walk through the magnificent Central Park. Uh, go from Times Square to Brooklyn to do some sightseeing and enjoy. So that's like the marketing. Then the specific speak uh, is in, that was in uh, script. This is in type, uh, in this fast-paced tick-to-ride game, so fast-paced, the other one is slow, players race one another through the busy streets of New York City to visit the most prestigious tourist attractions and complete their destination tickets. Uh, this elegantly simple uh, ticket-to-ride gameplay appeals to both beginners and seasoned players. Uh, learn the game in three minutes, play it for hours, uh, exclamation point. It uh, has a, like a website, uh, ticket number two ride to game dot com. And it cont contains uh, one board game, one board map of New York Transportation Network, 60 plastic taxis, 15 in each color, 44 transportation cards, uh, 18 destination ticket cards, one rule leaflet, uh, one score pad, one pencil. And it, uh, two to four players, you got to be eight plus, sorry, little kids, uh, 10 to 15 minutes per game. 
uh, no zero three, you know, no, no little kids. It has a uh, days of wonder Europe, uh, uh, and then days of wonder the U S uh, 2004 to 2018. So I could have played it as long. Yeah. We could have played it a while ago. Uh, and that's about it. And then it has some beautiful pictures of the cards and stuff like that. Uh, so that is the back of the game. And it's a square box. So I'll open it up now off of Mike and then get back to you. Okay, so the first thing is like the, um, is this a rules book? Oh, it's the rules book is made to look like a brochure. So I think that's cool. And it has, it says, welcome to the Big Apple. New York City, introducing famous originals. So some internal New York jokes there. And it has like a watercolor in the background of Central Park and maybe Central Park West, a couple buildings. And then opening it up, uh, we won't read through the rules, but uh, enjoy your visit going from Central Park to the Empire State Building and from Times Square to Brooklyn. Yeah, it has, yeah, everything that's included the setup, which you set to place a board game map in the center of the table. Each player takes a set of plastic colored taxis. Shuffle the transportation cards, deal a starting hand of two cards to each player, and then place the deck near the board. Flip the top five cards from the deck face up. If by doing so, three of the five face up cards are taxi cards, immediately discard all five cards and flip five new cards. Uh, face up to replace them. So this is like the game where you could either draw from the flipped cards or a random card. And that's kind of thrilling because there is a wild card. Uh, uh, then you shuffle the destination tickets and deal two cards. So you start off with two destinations, two cards each player. Oh no, each player must look at their de destination ticket cards and decides which one they wish to keep. You may keep one or both, uh, if you choose to keep only one, the returned card is placed on the bottom of the destination ticket deck, uh, and then this place uh, uh, next to the board. And you have to keep your destination tickets secret till the end of the game. Uh, yeah, again, in the box, it has everything. Well, this will be good. Uh, I don't want to go, well, we could go through all the rules. This is good. Uh, I'll try to paraphrase uh so the object of the game is to score the most points, of course, and you score points by claiming a route between two adjacent locations, successfully completing a continuous path of loops, uh, routes between two locations on your destination tickets, and by connecting uh, tourist attractions. Uh, you also lose points for each of the destination ticket cards you do not complete by the end of the game. So that's like the risk or reward if you're trying to really win. Okay, get the game turn. Your youngest player goes first. Uh, you go clockwise, uh, and you take turns till the game ends. On your turn, you can only do one and only one of the following three actions. Draw a transportation card. Uh, claim a route or draw destination tickets, uh, which is the same in the main game. Okay, so draw transportation cards. Transportation cards match the route colors on the board. There's blue, green, uh, black, pink, and red, and orange. Uh, except for taxi cards, which are wild cards, multicolored, and they can replace any card when you're claiming a route. Uh, you can have any number of transportation cards in your hand at any time, but you can only draw them obviously one at a time. Uh, this action allows you to draw, oh wait, oh, you get to draw two transportation cards. You can take the top card from the deck, a blind draw, or you could take any one of, uh, the five face up cards. In this case, immediately put, replace it with the top card on the deck, uh, as an exception, if you take a face-up taxi card as your first card, you can't take another card on your turn. You cannot take a face-up taxi card on your second turn either. Second card either. That's good clarity. Thank you, whoever wrote these instructions, because these would be arguing points. So do you understand? You could take a taxi card, but because it's a wild card, you can only take one. And here's just a pro tip that I've learned. Uh, 
is that as you're like looking at the, so there'll be five cards face up that you could choose from, or you could choose to draw blind from the face down card. And I, I, I usually, this is like your first risk reward decision because there is like a whatever one in seven chance that uh, the face down card uh, could be a wild card or one of the colors you need. So it's kind of about like, oh, it, are any of the colors you need face up or if you do, or are there two face up colors you could take uh, to start accumulating cards of one color? So is there a color you need, yes or no? If it's no, if it's yes, you probably take that color. And then on your second turn, uh, d decide, you know, decide, well, the same thing. If on your first turn it's no, there are no colors you need, then ask, okay, are there two cards of the same color? Because then you could consecutively draw like two red cards, for example. This is just Scoot's strategy coming at you for free. Uh, so do you could do that, or you could draw uh, from the face sound deck and then hope you get the color you need. So, or if there isn't either, or if there are two car color cards or two cards of, of matching colors, or there are not, you could draw. You could draw from the deck uh, and then hope you either get a wild card or a color you need or a color that's in the face down deck uh, on your first turn. And you could also just uh, say scoots uh, like every time you do that and it doesn't work out because like majority of the time it's not going to work out. Uh, so really what I try to do in the early phases, I'll talk more about some of my strategy for the main game. It could be different for this game. And my strategy is a high, high risk, uh, especially at the beginning and then at the end. In the middle phases of the game, it's like an accumulation phase, uh, and like I guess my gameplay is four stages. Uh, so first, uh, well, let's just uh, let, let's just say okay. So so I guess I'm, I'm uh, it got mixed up. But, but so when you're drawing, those are some ideas of how to draw cards. And I always look at it: uh, Am I trying to accumulate cards, or am I trying to take risk? Uh, like, so if it's really early, you could kind of take a risk to try to build up some wild cards and, uh, like, a healthy amount of uh, things. Now, we'll talk about the destinations in a minute. Uh, as an exception, if at any time three of the face-up cards are taxis, immediately discard all five cards and flip five new cards from the deck uh, face-up to replace them. So that happens automatically, and uh, so I always wondered what triggered that. So that's interesting. Uh, when the deck is empty, shuffle the discarded cards to create a new transportation card deck. Okay, claim a route. A route is a set of spaces of the same color on the board that links two adjacent locations. And I'll talk about that when we open up the map. Uh, some locations are connected by double routes, so two routes of the same length connecting the same locations. A single player cannot claim both routes of a double route, Okay. Uh, no, no. In two-player uh, games, once a root of a double root is claimed, oh wow, it's locked down and cannot be claimed by the other player. So that's going to cause trouble for me and Sophia probably. To claim a root, you must discard a number of cards from your hand equal to the number of spaces of the root, uh, and place a plastic taxi on each of those spaces. Uh, most routes require a specific set of cards. For example, a blue route must be claimed by discarding blue transportation cards. If there are gray routes, though. Those can be claimed with any set of cards of one color. You can claim any open route on the board, even if it is not connected to a route you have previously claimed. But you cannot claim more than one route per turn. If you don't have enough plastic taxis left to place one on each space, you can't claim that route. You can claim a route that is three places wrong. Look, then you can also use wild cards, right? Uh, so they try to show some examples. Okay, d this destination and ticket cards. So each destination card shows two locations in a point value. At the end of the game, you score the point value of each destination card you've completed. To complete a destination, you have to connect the two locations listed on the card by creating a continuous path of routes you've claimed. And now I'll tell you that it could be as meandering or uh, 
like, a, and this is another pro tip on Ticket to Ride. Like, you could go, like, from New York to Toronto to, like, Cleveland to Chicago and then down through Texas and then over to Florida, like, in a giant uh, sea. And then still, like, if you had, like, New York to Miami and New York to Chicago and to Toronto to, La- like, Louisiana... That's one thing I like to do just because it's clean, and sometimes it doesn't always win the longest route. Uh, but I tell myself it's efficient. It just brings me some joy, like some kind of level joy, too, of like uh, order. But I am decent at the game. I mean, when I'm playing against an 8-year-old in, like, a limited AI computers. Uh, okay, so connect to destinations. This action allows you to draw more... Oh, you can have any number of destination ticket cards. So if you take this action for your turn, you can draw more destination ticket cards. To do so, take two cards from the top of the destination ticket stack. Now, you have to keep one of these cards, uh, and you can keep both of them. And any return cards are placed on the bottom of the deck. You cannot discard a destination ticket once you have chosen to keep it. If there's only one destination ticket card left in the deck, you can still uh, do this action, but you must keep the card. Uh, Destination cards uh, and their completion must be kept, even their completion must be kept secret from other players at the end of the game. So here's my one-time strategy. I don't always do this, but, uh, like, I might take my, so I'll see what destination cards I got to start the game. And then I can I may take my first two or three turns uh, drawing more destination ticket cards to see if I get lucky. And what I mean for, by that is like destinations that are overlapping. So say you did have uh, New York to Miami, and then you then on your next turn you draw destination cards and you happen to get like Toronto uh, to Atlanta, and then on the next turn you happen to get. Uh, New York uh, to uh, St. Louis or something. Those are all tickets in the same general direction, so then you can really pile up some points. So that's the reward. The risk is that you could also get really unlucky, and then you have, like, New York to Miami, which is a pretty long route, and then say, say I also have, like, New York to Los Angeles. Then I might not draw ticket cards because it's like, okay, that's going to be tough. But say you just had a short route, like New York to Boston. So then on the next one, if you draw New York to Los Angeles, you're going to be, that's going to be tough. Or you draw like Los Angeles uh, to Salt Lake City or something. You say, well, those aren't even anywhere near each other. So it's just just deciding your risk tolerance and stuff. Game end and final scoring when a player has two or fewer plastic taxis left in their supply, each player, uh, including that player, gets one last turn. Uh, then the game ends and players calculate the finer, final scores. First, each player scores points for the routes they claimed during the game based on the route scoring table printed on the board. Uh, then each player reveals their destination ticket cards, reveal, uh, adds the value of each card they completed, subtracts the value of the ones they failed to complete. So there's your risk again. And finally, each player scores one point for each tourist attraction that is connected to one or more of the routes they claimed. Player with the one po- most points win. In the case of a tie, the player who completed the most destination ticket cards wins. If players are still tied, then they share victory. Uh, then there's an ad. If you enjoyed your visit to Big Apple, how about traveling across the whole United States from New York to the Midwest Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains to the California coast? A Ticket to Ride, which is a game I've mostly been taking, talking about, is designed for two to five players. Uh, features a giant board of the rail network in North America at the dawn of the 20th century. And then the credits. The game design is by Alan R. Moon. Illustrations are by Julian Dalval. Uh, graphic design is by Serial uh, Daljan. Uh, special thanks from Alan and uh, D.O.W. Uh, to all those who play tested the game, Janet Moon, Bobby West, Martha, Ian, Michelle, Scott, Aiden, Adrian, Lydia, Alicia, Jonathan, Casey, Emily, Lawson, and Ryan. 
So that's the instruction. So let me get out the board next. Okay, I just noted the, the scorecard is very small. It's cute, uh, but it's very small, the size of a business card. So for keeping score, that's uh, funny. Okay, so I'm opening the board, and it's... Uh, so it's lower Manhattan. It goes from like goes from mid like uh, it goes from uh, Lincoln Center down to Brooklyn. That's the only borough. So let's see. It has a funny fun grape soda. Like it has some cute uh, designs on there. So it has a fake cat soda cap on there. Uh, it has a New York City the brochure. It has a ticket to a magic shop or a magic show from 1925. Uh, another theater show, Showtime, uh, Orchestra, February 11th, 1961. Has a key to room 1209 at the Wonders Hotel. Uh, then let's see down here. It looks like it has a transportation, it has a couple different transportation tickets, and then it has the scoring thing. So one tax equals one point. For a route, uh, two taxis equal two points, uh, three taxis equal four points, and four taxi routes equal seven points. So you can see how they multiply in like longer routes or uh, more. Okay, so some of the ones, I, okay, so this is something I don't understand. Some of them have circles with pennies, which I assume means they're a uh, tourist attraction, maybe. Uh, but there's a Lincoln Center that has a red circle. That's the furthest uh, west, uh, northwest. Uh, then in the middle is Central Park. Uh, then uh, south of Lincoln Center is Midtown West. Uh, then a little southeast of Midtown West is Chelsea. Uh, then uh, south uh, of Chelsea is Soho. And then at the southernmost point of the island is Wall Street, uh, uh, then heading south from Central Park is Times Square. Then a little southeast is the Empire State Building. A little bit more southeast, uh, or due east is from Times Square is United Nations. Uh, southeast from Empire State Building is Gramercy Park. Uh, then a little southwest of that is the Vill Greenwich Village. Uh, then east of that is East Village. Uh, south of the East Village is the Lower East Side. Uh, west, a little southwest, is Chinatown, and then south of Chinatown is uh, Wall Street, and then on the southeast of the map is Brooklyn. So those are all the things. I just don't know what the pennies mean with a circle. So it has a number one. So Central Park, I would assume those are tourist attractions. Uh, Times Square, United Nations, Empire State Building, Chelsea, Greenwich Village, Chinatown, Wall Street, and Brooklyn all have uh, uh, pennies with circles. So let me just uh, bounce back and see if I could uh, figure out what that means. Uh, so I'm back opening up the um, uh, claim a route, uh, two routes, uh, most routes, uh, specific sets of cards, draws transportation cards, uh, connecting tourist attractions, Oh, here it is. Finally, each... Oh, yeah, it is the penny. One point. It means one point. Uh, each score, player scores the tourist attractions uh, connected to one or more of the routes. So it just has to be connected to your routes. Okay, so it looks like it comes with uh, four colors of taxis, white, purple, a teal, and a yellow. But what's impressive... And they all have their own bags. But then also what's impressive is it looks like it comes with two extra taxis of each color in case you lose them, maybe. Uh, so that's interesting. So I have, um, okay, so I have the destination cards and the taxi cards in my hand. So the the um, the unexposed side of the taxi cards is like a New York skyline with the New York in uh, cursive with the uh, USA flag. And so we have the taxi. Uh, oh, yeah, good question. How many taxis are there? We'll count them. So the taxi's very 70s, uh, like in the background with the multicolors and bubbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight taxis. The next one is pink. It's a pink uh, kind of uh, double-decker Greyhound-style bus. 
So that's pretty cool and very 70s, too. Let's see if there's seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six or seven. And then blue is a subway car. Uh, let me just count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, six maybe. Yeah, then the next one is green. It's a city bus, like a 70s, 60s city bus uh, with some green. And they're probably the same amount, six or seven of those. Uh, then gray is a little bit rougher. Like, so maybe the um, blue is an elevated train. And then, uh, or maybe I guess the silver is the elevated train. A little bit rougher silver subway car in a black, or the car is either black or silver or gray. Then um, the red is like a electrified uh, city bus, uh, kind of like we see in San Francisco, but a little bit more of a 70s. And then there's orange, which is your school bus. Uh, so that's pretty fun. Uh, I like that. That makes it a fun part of the game. And then we have the destination cards, which I'll count out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So eighteen divided by four. I think it's 4.5. So that's interesting when you play with four players because that'll definitely keep it like, uh, keep it interesting. Now, the back side of the card, it says City of New York, Board of Transportation, New York Transit System, uh, valid for 20 cents, one fare. It also has like what looks like a subway token and a couple transit tickets on there. Uh, so a little evocative. And then look, so look at the possible destinations. Uh, and we'll think strategy. So the first one I see is Times Square to Soho, um, which is worth six points. And then there's also Times Square to East Village. So this is what I'm talking about. These haven't been shuffled. That's four points. And then there's Times Square to Brooklyn. So maybe I'll shuffle these later and just see. Then we have a, a smaller route uh, worth two points, the Lower East Side to Wall Street. Uh, then a six-point route, Chelsea to Wall Street. Then an eight-point route, U United Nations to Wall Street. So I'm already seeing some opportunities for some big points. Uh, then Central Park to Midtown West is three points. Uh, Central Park to Gramercy Park is four points. Uh, Central Park to Chinatown is eight points. Uh, Central Park to Chelsea is five uh, then you have Lincoln Center to Empire State Building is three. Uh, Lincoln Center or Empire State Building to Greenwich Village is three. Empire State Building to Brooklyn is seven. Chelsea to Brooklyn is eight. Uh, the UN to Midtown West is three. Gramercy Park to Chinatown, four. East Village to Soho is four. And Lincoln Center to Greenwich Village is, is six. Okay, so let's do a little strategy session here. I'm going to open the board up again. And then we'll just practice, like, if I was playing a game, like, the, if we, let's just practice if in the first two or three turns after drawing, we won't do any gameplay, but just strategy of the destination cards. So on the first, so I tried to shuffle the cards. Let me do, like, one more deck switch or cut the cards so let's just pretend on my first uh on the setup of the game i got two transportation cards so i'm looking at them and i got united nations to midtown west so united nations is in the upper east side of the board and midtown west is right across town west it's only worth three points uh but it's also like they're gray, so it's there's only one route route to Times Square that's gray, and then there's a, a single gray route uh, to connect to Times Square to Midtown West. Also, United Nations. This is an extra thing to think about for me. Is like the United Nations and Times Square are uh, tourist attractions, so that's an extra two points, I think, or maybe three points. Uh, depending on scoring. So I would probably, so that one is like a, not a bad route because uh, 
Like, uh, we'd have to think about it. Now, the next one I got is Chelsea to Brooklyn. Now, that's an eight-pointer. Now, here's the good news. Chelsea is only two routes south of Midtown West. Uh, so I would probably end up keeping both of these because then I could try to connect uh, Chelsea to Brooklyn and then Chelsea to Midtown West and the United Nations and then hope on our next two turns we get something that is in that area. So if this was my first beginning, I would just keep both these destination cards. And then let's pretend this is the first round. I'm going to take more destination cards. Most people are going to be actually doing things. And let's see how we did. So on our first round, or so what do we have here? We have, I got Central Park to Gramercy Park. Uh, So this isn't perfect, but it's not a disaster. And then... So Central Park is in the the furthest north, and Gramercy Park is, that's a four-pointer. And Gramercy Park is, uh, it's kind of in the mid-east of the map. So that's four points. So it's like, okay. I mean, mean, I've never played this game before, but now I'm saying, okay, could I use that still? Well, yeah, I could go Central Park to United Nations uh, to Gramercy Park. That's a pretty nice route. And then... Maybe connect Gramercy Park to Chelsea somehow. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, and then keep working my way towards Brooklyn. So I definitely would keep that card too. Then the next one I got is Empire State Building to Greenwich Village. Now everything, I, I would keep this one too because Greenwich Village is on the way to Brooklyn from Chelsea. And the Empire State Building is kind of in between, is in the middle of the map. So now I have four cards. I probably would stop at this point uh, just because I say, well, I got to get from Chelsea to Brooklyn. That's a pretty big di- di- distance. All the r- other routes are kind of short. Uh, and they're kind of near each other, though they're not interconnected. But let's just say, okay, well, I'm, I'm feeling like my competition's strong here. And if I take the next round, I, you know, I could take two cards I could see, and then I only have to keep one. So it's still early in the game, and then I just won't worry about Then the rest of the game I'll play straight through. Because another thing I would do is do this and then see how fast I could complete all those routes. And then if it's like if I'm looking like I'm, it's a high chance I'm going to complete it all, which I would do by locking down any like single routes I definitely need and then working my way out uh, and trying to keep it one just as efficient as I can, then I would probably start to take another destination card if it looks like the game's going to go on. But if I had a ton of destination cards, then I'm just going to play the game out probably. So let's take the high-risk move here and take two more cards. And oh boy, I think we got very lucky because the two ones we got were Gramercy Park to Chinatown, and we already have to get Gramercy Park in. That's Well, that's only four, though. So, hmm. A Gramercy Park to Chinatown. Uh, but Chinatown's on the way to Brooklyn. Now, we didn't have Chinatown, but we did have Gramercy Park. And we already have a S- Central Park, right? Because uh, the other card is an eight-pointer, Central Park to Chinatown. And we already have to, like, so we might as well just keep both these cards. So then now we're like, this is going to be a risky game now uh, because we have, now I'd start to order my cards. So we have Chelsea to Brooklyn on the bottom. So we have Central Park to, this is where having a computer is a little bit easier, but you just start to organize your cards. You say, okay, United Nations to Midtown West, uh, Central Park. We have to link that. But if we're only linking the small steps, say, okay, Gramercy Park to Chinatown, and that'll go with Chelsea to Brooklyn. We don't really have to worry about uh, Central Park to Chinatown because that's going to be connected as long as we're doing our job. So we got to start to look at our weak points. Do we have United Nations in there? We do. And Midtown West. So that could, Midtown West could be our problem area. So the first thing we want to do is probably connect Chinatown or Central Park to United Nations. Like Brooklyn looks pretty good. There's a lot of routes to Brooklyn. Three ways to get to Brooklyn, all of which are near Chinatown. Uh, Greenwich Village to Chelsea there's a, is robust. Uh, so I think our biggest risk right now 
is, uh, well, okay, so I do have a strategy. So we would get, so what's our first priority business is connecting Central Park to the United Nations. Then do we have, we, do, we don't have Times Square, right? You're right. So we just have, uh, then we would try to look at ideally connect uh, the United Nations to Empire State Building. That's a two black. Central Park to uh, um, United Nations is a three pink. So those would be on my critical watch list to say, okay, we need pink and black trains. Then we want to connect to probably the Empire State Building to Midtown West or to Chelsea uh, to finish out those routes. Would it be great? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so then we say, okay, if I could connect the Empire State Building to Midtown West, that's a two green. It, then I almost don't have, then I, like, I, I don't almost, like, Chelsea's pretty safe, uh, so then we'd have the top half of the map locked up. We'd get three pink, two black, two green. And we'd have like our top part of the map locked up. And then we know we have to get uh, Gramercy Park we have to get to, which is another option with that. Uh, we have to get Chelsea in there and Greenwich Village. So I'd probably look at trying to connect to Chelsea to Gramercy Park uh like, I just go with whatever, because whatever, we could connect to Midtown West or the Empire State Building or the United Nations. There is a two orange between Chelsea and Gramercy Park, uh, but there's also ways to connect it to the Empire State Building. So that's pretty good. And once we have connect, like either, well, we have to connect some part of our monster route to either Chelsea or Gramercy Park, right? So either way. If we connect one of those and it's interconnected to our whole route, then all we have to do is connect either a Chelsea or Gramercy Park to, to, to uh, Greenwich Village. And we don't have the East Village, right? So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, oh, boy. So then we're in pretty much, I mean, I don't want to start bragging, uh, but once we get a, a Greenwich Village attached to... Uh, is that really it? Wow. Yeah, we would be, I don't know how many trains you get. So we could be like in trouble for that. So I might've taken too many cards for that, but then we really are in a dominant position because basically all we have to do is connect a Greenwich village uh, to Chinatown and Brooklyn. And we could do that if we need to by indirect means, uh, because the lower Manhattan is very busy. Uh, like we could use, uh, we could go, like a long route from Chelsea to Soho. We could go from Greenwich Village to Soho. We could go straight to Chinatown. We could go from Brooklyn to Wall Street to Chinatown. We could go from Brooklyn to Wall Street to Soho to Greenwich Village to Chinatown. If we if we needed to, though, I bet you those options would be more limited. We could go to the East Village and the Lower East Side. So, yeah, I wouldn't feel terrible about that. I mean, this would be a high... We would probably win the game, uh, but we would have to get kind of lucky. And some of our card draws, we'd have to be very efficient in card counting as far as like, okay, how many cards do other people have left? How many taxis are left? And putting down trains uh, like as we get them, but locking down routes and making sure the other player's not trying to block us. Because uh, we wouldn't want to lose any of those main northern routes uh, just because once those were locked down, then it would start to be inefficient. So we'd want to try to place things efficiently. But I would think we'd be in good shape. Like, it would be really like, uh, how are we drawing, how well are we getting lucky with, like, getting the colors we need? Uh, how aggressive is the other players? Because there's sometimes players, especially the AI can players, that just start playing, playing, playing. And they're putting down routes, even if they're not connecting destinations. They're playing really fast. And if you get a couple of those fast players, then we're going to be in last place. So this strategy that we played with that many destinations is really a, like a... It is an all-or-nothing thing, but it wouldn't be an all-or-nothing right away. Like, a, we would be in the game until the game ends, and then we would probably either win or come in last. Yeah, but it, it it is a kind of it is a kind of aggressive play I do like to do for this for the bigger game. So I probably would, and you'll find out like with this one, it'd be like okay, there's just not enough taxis and cards to go for that many destinations, and then you could adjust in the next game. So that's a little bit about uh, this game, Ticket to Ride. It's a great game. Buy the uh, app version. 
Yeah, I'll have to, maybe I'll buy the new, yeah, I'll buy the new app version and let you know. So when this comes out, uh, what the latest version is like, uh, so that, yeah, you say, okay, Scoots, I'm going to, I'll pay whatever, 10, 20 bucks. If that's how, I mean, it's definitely worth it to me. And also by the time this episode comes out, I've played a lot of this, uh, home version. Uh, so yeah, let me, uh, let me tuck you in there. Hope you have dreams of, uh. Uh, choo choo chewing and bus bus busting off to dreamland. Good night. All right. I wanted to thank everybody that uh, made commented on Castbox and uh, uh, YouTube. But now I have to look up uh, Castbox searching comments. Uh, okay. Uh, someone asked why is the intro so long, so they must not have liked it. Uh, uh someone else. Uh, can't can't even make out the words they're saying. Okay, so that's another. Uh, then someone has ain't no party like a census party, and the census party don't sh- sh- stop. Uh, that was uh, Chad, I think. Uh, then Chad, another Chad, Chad P said, "Oh, my cats like to jump in bed when uh, the mystery bard sings." Uh, and a couple other people commented on that because they liked that comment. Uh, then uh, Daniel said. Uh, Love this one. This was Pop, the Pop Sock, Pop and Mop, the latest Pop and Mop episode. Uh, uh, Thania uh, said she can't even last for 10 minutes uh, with that episode. Uh, uh, DeAndre says, puts you to sleep. I can't even make it through. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, Sawyer agrees uh, in a good good way. Uh, Stephanie wound away in uh, disliking the podcast. Uh, um, Ch- Chad uh, always sleeps better with it in the phone. Uh, Matt, uh, so like, people are very honest down here. Uh, Matt said that was awful. Uh, but I guess it's, I think sometimes people think we're getting paid for it, like, uh, paid for the listens or two. So then they get extra mad. Like, I'm going to unsubscribe. Uh, but yeah, it's free. So, uh, uh, stutter, someone didn't like the stutter on one of them, uh, but the podcast still helps them in general. Uh, Taylor was a new listener. They liked it. <laughs> wow, this is like a bit like YouTube. Then John weighed in in a different way. Yeah, Eric weighed in positively. Ann Archie, the, the podcast helps them. Uh, uh, intro, uh, they... Uh, Learned a lot about, oh, they liked the Australia Sleepy uh, Slang Tour. Uh, Sander slept for 30 minutes. Uh, uh, Jasmine with a Z uh, really fell asleep uh, deeply. Uh, and then uh, Mary B said, hey, here's how you uh, set a sleep timer. Uh, good old Manny T uh, commented. Uh, Manny T's a regular commenter on uh, how the podcast helps. Uh, gemstone, they, they, uh, geez, they say, geez, I fell asleep really fast. Uh, Jenny fell asleep, has been sleeping on the podcast for years. Jenny with a Y. Uh, Betsy, uh, likes listening, or, Be- sorry, Bessie, I'm sorry, Bessie, uh, falls asleep to it and started running for it. Uh, that's actually, uh, funny because that's one of the inspirations for the podcast for me is like, uh, before I started making the podcast, I would listen to podcasts because I, I don't enjoy r- 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 running, but uh, like I, I like it was tolerable when I would listen to a podcast because be distracted, like I'd have the thoughts in my head in the podcast and then running, so I wouldn't have my thoughts about running, and so that was always helpful for, for me. So I agree, like uh, that it's like okay, then I can either have my internal monologue going or listen to a podcast. Uh, but I don't have my internal monologue going about, or I'm not focused on the running part. I mean, I'm focused on, you know, where I'm going and stuff, but not how much I loathe running. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody, for sharing about the podcast on CastBox. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, those, positive com- those positive comments uh, were really a boost. Uh, it can be humbling, though, uh, like uh, YouTube and now CastBox to go on there. Holy moly. But that's great because people get to express their honest opinion. That's actually how the podcast grows, and it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, that's just a natural thing. So if it does work for you or there's any other podcast in the world you love, uh, 
Please let people know about them. That's really the only in the U.S. Only fifty percent of people listen to a podcast at all, and uh, growing that number is going to help everybody. Because you say, "Well, geez, uh, when you find podcasts you love, it just makes your life richer." In this case, it hopefully helps you fall asleep too. So, if you can let someone know about the podcast, I'm going to let you know about a podcast from Night Vale Presents right now. Uh, take it away, Scoots.